Hey guys, my name is Brandon and welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you like what you see in here, you're more than welcome to hit the subscribe button so you stay notified every time I upload a new video. Okay, let's get straight on with today's video. Hey everyone and welcome back to Is That Brandon. So in today's video I'm actually going to be talking about some of the projects that I have been involved with over the last I don't know how many years to just kind of explain how I've kind of shaped myself into the person that I am today because I think I didn't really start doing work experience and projects and things like that until I was at least 17. I think I was on NCS as a member of staff in 2000 and I did NCS in 2006, 2017 I think, 2016, 2015, 2015, so how many years ago was that? 10, almost 10 years ago, so basically almost 10 years ago, so I think from when I was about 16 is when I started doing experiences and projects and things like that, so I've got a list so I'm not going to go in too much detail for everything, I'm just going to kind of go over a bit of a timeline as to, you know, things that I've achieved or things that I've done over the years um, to kind of just, you know, close that chapter, be proud of what I've done and just know going forward I'm going to be doing things that are 10 times better, if not 100 times better. So I think where it all started for me was just, you know, being a young person, having a lot of troubles. I dealt with a lot of things by myself. I didn't really have support from those that you're supposed to have support from. So I'm just gonna kind of get that out of the way because that is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Um, and yeah, I think for me, as I was growing up, even when I was 13, 14, 15, I kind of was always hanging around older people. So yes, I had a few friends at school. Yes, I had a few, you know, teachers and professionals in different sports. Um, so for example like a swimming teacher or a tennis teacher or a golf teacher people that I got on well with and you know had good conversations with as a young person but obviously when they have obviously went off to do their own things or they moved on to a different club for example I was kind of just left by myself again so yeah like I said I'm not going to ever delve into every single aspect of my personal life or my childhood I think that's just a little bit too kind of depressing to listen to but I think in terms of this video it's more just celebrating everything that I managed to do kind of during those times and after those times as well to obviously be where I am today. So I think one of the first projects that I was involved with, I'm sure there's many more before um, and many more to come, but the first one was a presentation that I did um, during NCS which is the National Citizen Service. This is basically a time away for three weeks uh, for young people between the ages of 15 and 17 to kind of learn a new skill, uh, make friends, go on some sort of adventure, and then also do a bit of charity work as well. So I was actually on the programme, I believe the year before, so I think 2016 I was on the programme, um, or 2015 I was on the programme, and then 2016 I then did like voluntary, um, like a voluntary member of staff. I can't actually remember if I was paid or if it was voluntary, I think it was voluntary. But yeah, I remember doing that, and I must explain to you that I, as a young child, absolutely hated doing presentations, I hated talking in front of people, whether it was at school, whether it was at clubs, whether it was at like a drama club or whatever, or in front of family, having to learn lines, read books, all that sort of thing, I just absolutely hated it. I didn't really read books, I didn't really like languages, so I was just someone that was just very, do my life every day as it is, um, and do more creative things, so like drawing, or writing, or making PowerPoint presentations, which is literally what I used to do every other week. So this first actual presentation, ironically, was a PowerPoint presentation and it was actually with someone who I'm actually no longer, well, I'm not going to say no longer friends with, we don't really just, we just don't really talk anymore, it kind of just, we got on really, really well and it just kind of ended and to this day I still actually don't know why this person discontinued their friendship with me. I kind of got a message from their friend saying, oh, she's not interested in being your friend anymore, um, but she wishes you well and da da da. So yeah, like I said, I don't know where she is or what she's doing now or who she's with or, you know, but she was the girl that I basically met um, at NCS um, whilst we were both there as members of staff or volunteers and we actually presented together, which was probably one of the best presentations I think I've done. It must have been in front of about 100 young people, members of staff. I don't know if there was some extra like parents or, you know, people that worked in that building as well, but that was somewhere in London. Um, and like I said, it was just basically a presentation about what NCS the third week was. They've obviously done their action week, they've done their skills week, and this was the week where they were doing something for charity. 
Um, and then kind of just, yeah, in that presentation, we were talking about, you know, what things have you learned through the programme so far? Or have you made any friends from the programme? Or where do you want to go after the programme? So it was a very good time for me to show that I do actually have confidence. I just needed to kind of find it. And I think because I obviously was a couple of years older, I just naturally felt a little bit more like they're actually going to listen to us. Like, I know I wasn't like, you know, a CEO or a manager or whatever, but because I'd already gone through the experience they'd gone through and they were a few years younger, yeah, it was kind of like, kind of like we were teachers and they were like students. And actually, some of them I kind of still talk to or I kind of still see some of them on social media. But again, it's quite difficult for me because obviously being on the program as well, I don't know if they were on the program that I was on when I was on the program or if they were on the program that I was on when I was a member of staff. So it's quite difficult because there's so many young people that got confused, but I'm sure there are some of them around that still know who I am, still watch my stuff. And you know, if any of them are interested in making content or you know, catching up on what they've done over the last few years of life and they do see this video, message me on Instagram or something and I'm sure we can get that, uh, we can get that sorted out because yeah, there was a lot of good characters and a lot of nice people. I just kind of, yeah, felt like everyone disappeared as people do everywhere. And I think that's the thing, like, I've got a good group of friends, but they're all sprinkled in different places um, from the world, basically. And then I'm gonna kind of skip um, a lot of years down the line. So yeah, these are kind of not in any particular order, but I also did a presentation um, at Nottingham Trent University. So that's the university that I studied at doing media. And I basically did a third, uh, a third year talk or a talk to the third year students no, second year students, as a third year student. I think I had just gone out the night before, so I was very, very tired. But um, I basically spoke about what the module was that they were going to be doing. But I basically was just talking about, again, similarly to the NCS thing, it was just a PowerPoint presentation where I kind of just had one slide. And yeah, I was just talking about, you know, what made me choose this module, um, how the module leader, Georgia, was really, really helpful. And again, kind of having to deal with like things like rejection and job interviews and job applications and things like that. So yeah, it was a very, very interesting opportunity for me. But like I said, it was something that I just needed to prove myself to myself. It wasn't even proving anyone else wrong. It was kind of at that point, just like, come on, Brandon, you can do this. You are brave enough. And you know, you're speaking from experience. It's not like you're, you know, overselling yourself. You're genuinely just talking about things that you've done that could actually help other young students as well. So I really, really felt proud of myself there as well. And then also earlier on uh, throughout my time at university as well, I also was able to do an interview. So I did an interview for the media department. I was doing student interviews, kind of filming those for different projects. And I did a social media Instagram um, Q&A. So I think I took control of the Instagram about three or four times. They're all still on my Instagram now, right at the end. And yeah, I was basically just answering questions about university, university life. I did meet a couple of people through there as well. So I had a few people actually message me on the page directly asking me questions or, you know, sending in requests of things to talk about or places to visit in the town. So again, it was just, I just felt like I had a bit of a presence and a little bit of, you know, just people were listening and people were understanding and people were like, oh, who's this Brandon guy? Or I used to get seen around the town and people are like, oh, that's Brandon. Oh my God, that's Brandon. So yeah, it was obviously a bit nerve wracking, but at least people were seeing me in light of good things as opposed to you know he's done this wrong and he's skipping class and all of that which i never used to do well i might have skipped a few classes but we won't go into that um and then yet yeah, another project that i was part of um was unibuddy now unibuddy was basically as it says on the tin being a buddy to other students at university again this was something that allowed me to connect with more students it was pretty much just like a q a app so obviously I was on the website and my kind of category was media. So anything media related, anything creative, people could message me about. So I did have a few messages directly on there. It was an external app. So it was literally just like someone's first name and then their flag of what country they were coming from. They're asking questions like, how's the accommodation at Nottingham? And are there any places to go out? And if you're not a drinker, are there any places to go? And what societies are there? So it was all different people asking all different questions. And it was literally just typing back answers as quickly as possible, replying as quickly as possible. Um, I also was able to go to Gay Times in 2023. So I actually took Rachel with me. So this is when I was working at Just Eat Takeaway. But that was an amazing experience. And again, we were helping bake, not bake cookies, but put baked cookies into bags. Um, we were able to speak to a lot of like celebrities and famous people, did a lot of networking there. Again, one place I forgot to take my business cards because that would have been an amazing place to be like, look, this is the content sort of stuff that I do. I'm not famous, but I'm looking to create content. 
Um, Amsterdam, again, many a times. I've now been to Amsterdam, I think, three times. So again, all of those were kind of work-related, but also just I hadn't been to Amsterdam before, and I just thought, you know, well, the first time I went on my own, met some of my colleagues over there, and that was really, really nice. And then the second time, same thing, had a little group. And then the third time, uh, we had a little work trip paid for, which was nice as well. In terms of grades, so I've actually done my grade eight drums, my grade eight drama, my grade three singing, and my grade one guitar. I think I did a grade one guitar exam, but I don't think I got any further than that. Um, I've done various voiceovers for YouTube content creators. So I think the videos are still up, but I have done little voiceover work. Um, I think one was kind of like a little Minecraft series, and then one was like a student uh, or young people's poetry book where I was Max the Frog, I think I was called, Max the Fish, Max the Frog, something like that. I was also part of a social media app called Rizzle. Now Rizzle LTD is, again, basically kind of like Instagram, but you just create videos about anything and everything all the time. And it was an amazing app to use when there wasn't that many people on it. And I think now there's just so many things on it. And, you know, I've even had a look at like reviews and things and the actual, um, the app being updated. There are so many things on it. I kind of left that world as it started, started popping, popping off. So yeah, I, I made a lot of money from that app and it basically is just you post short videos and you can win little competitions and you know, you can share your interests and your hobbies and things like that. And also creating content, answering other people's questions and things like that. So yeah, that was an amazing opportunity for me during COVID to just earn a bit of extra money and force myself to make content. But now it's like, I don't want to just create content for the sake of it. Like I have certain niches and certain things that I would create content about. So it was an amazing opportunity and it did get me a lot of, you know, content created and good views and, you know, people replying to my videos and things. But I think purely it was just, it blew up during COVID because people couldn't go anywhere. Um, and as of now, I don't think I'd go back to that app, but it was an amazing experience. And I thank everyone that, you know, reached out to me to actually get on that app as well. Um, at university, again, a couple of other projects. Uh, I was car park security advisor. Now, this was something that I absolutely loved. So I have never been a warden before. I've never done car park security advisory things before, but I just saw the opportunity on the student uh, website and I just kind of applied just sporadically and they pulled me for a quick interview to be like, oh, what made you like, intrigued and interested in a job? And I said, I just like cars. I said, I'll be honest, I love cars. I love, you know, kind of making a road out of pens and pencils and driving cars around. So literally, this is an opportunity that I want to give a go because I'm sure it's not difficult. I'm not having to actually drive the cars. I'm just having to direct them to their parking spaces. So I'm not driving the car, but they're doing it themselves. And I ended up doing the opportunity for probably about five months. So it was basically every Saturday morning, every Sunday morning, um, sometimes Friday as well. And sometimes it was the entire of Saturday. So it'd be like Saturday morning through to Saturday evening, Sunday morning through to Sunday evening. And obviously I was a student at this point as well. So it's not like I had anything else to do at the weekends. I wasn't really going out and there wasn't really anything else to do other than just study and revise and do essays. So I thought, hang on, why don't I make money during the weekend? And then I can use that for during the week to you know, buy food, go and have you know dinner somewhere and you know do some student stuff in town. So it kind of paid for that and also kind of helped me save some of my uh, student money as well. So it was an amazing experience. I met a lot of good people there. Like I, I can't really remember most of the people's names. I remember being on the security desk and being like, hello sir, hello madam, can I take your name please? Okay, car park on the left, car park on the right. It was amazing, I absolutely loved it. So if there's anything like that where I can secure a venue or something like that, that's kind of like, I would say that's my perfect job because I'm talking to people, I'm in a position of authority and you know, I obviously I know that I'm safe because I'm around people that are in the same sort of uniform and outfit as me. But also, yeah, it's just a nice way to talk to people and it involves cars. So yeah, that was a really interesting part of my life. Um, also did a mistletoe challenge. So this is just basically like um, running around Nottingham with a mistletoe, seeing who's gonna kiss me under the mistletoe. It was me against one of the other girls. And I think I won just because if I didn't get the boyfriend to kiss me, I got a girlfriend to kiss me. So yeah, that was a bit of a, a weird uh, video. I remember we filmed that for our student um, student network at Nottingham Trent, but um, yeah, that was quite funny. And again, I just thought it was something to do that's unique, like uh, be confident and talk to random people in the public. So again, I don't really have that problem anymore. It's just, yeah, I guess certain moments you'll just have a day where you're like, oh, I don't really want to socialize. We'll have days where I'm like, oh, I do really want to socialize. So yeah, that was that. Um, the British LGBT Awards, again, this was kind of, a nice dress up suit tie kind of event so it was kind of telling us like diversity hero 
um, the closest ally to the community, um, the singer who'd done the most for the industry. So this was back in 2021, so that was a few years ago. Um, so yeah, that was basically an event just showcasing everyone that's part of LGBT um, life basically and kind of showcasing on different people who have done different achievements and things throughout the year. So if I remember rightly, I think Amory was the um, artist of the year. I think Philip Schofield had a shout out for him, you know, having come out as gay. And then I think you had um, Debbie Lovato, Miley Cyrus, people like that that were also shouted out for their appearances and, you know, their achievements and things for the music industry as well. Uh, another achievement is the fact that my music channel, uh, I actually got one million views on one video in particular. So I actually went to go and see Bad Baby, so the Catch Me Outside girl, uh, in 2017, I believe it was. I think I actually, it was either just before university or during one of the November Christmas um, periods. And yeah, front row. I basically went with a friend who ended up not going, so I technically had a spare ticket, which I sold. I actually overpriced and sold that ticket for a little bit higher than I should have, but she still got into the venue, that's fine. And yeah, made friends with people in the venue. Again, I don't really speak to them anymore. It was kind of just a one-time thing, or you know, we just faded apart. And yeah, that was an amazing experience. And again, like I said, that video was literally making me a lot of money. Um, and then I got demonetized because I wasn't getting enough <laughs> enough views on my channel. So yeah, if you want to go have a look at my music channel, that's just called Is That Brandon Music. I renamed it from Brandon Extra because again, doesn't really fit the personal branding. So that's why I changed that. Uh, for those of you that probably still don't know, um, I was actually in a music video with the Vamps. So yeah, it was their song called Personal. You don't see me as like a main character, but I was invited there for the day. I should have made a vlog. I feel like I should have you know, got some like behind the scenes shots and stuff, but I'm not 100% sure if we were allowed to film. And again, at that sort of time, I was still so nervous. I wasn't really sure what I was allowed and not allowed to do. It was, I think I questioned everything in life. I was kind of like, am I allowed to do this? Am I allowed to do that? Because I was so used to being told no, no, no. I didn't want to open my mouth. I just said, no, unless someone says you can, I just presumed I couldn't. Um, I got into a chess competition final. So I actually got up against a young guy. Um, I can't remember what his name was. But we basically got to the end of the game and I just kind of was just like, oh, I'm not going to win the game. So I actually forfeited. So I actually came runner up. Um, but yeah, I came second in a, in a chess competition, which I actually haven't played chess in a while. But I might even start doing that at some point because I'm actually quite good when I think. And you've got to think five, six, seven steps ahead. You can't just think, what am I going to do next? You've got to think, well, if I do this, he's going to do that. Then I'm going to do that. Then he's going to do that. And then I've got to do that. So I've got to think five moves ahead. Um, I was a senior prefect at school, so initially when I went for the interview, I actually got rejected, and when you become a prefect, it's the year above that decide whether you were or were not to become one. So I think I got to year, I think I was only year 9 or year 10, and I think it was the year 11s, there was about three of them in front of us, just saying, oh, what made you want to... Um, it was almost like speed dating, but three against one, and it was almost like, so what makes you want to be a prefect? So I told them, and I can't remember what I said. And they're like, oh, I'm really sorry, we can't offer you it. Went out the door, came back in, I went to a different line, and they're like, yeah, perfect, you're a prefect. So it just didn't really make sense. And one of my other, one of the other girls from school did that. She's actually now married with a kid, and she's whatever. But we did exactly the same thing. I just said, because I came out, and I was like, oh, they gave me the badge. And she goes, right, I'm going to go back in and try it. And she went to a different one, also got it, and then came back out. So, yeah. That was a bit of a weird uh, selection pro pro process. So I think for me, it's literally that phrase of, if, you, if it doesn't work for you once, try, try again. Because literally I got rejected the first time, went back in for a second time and got accepted the second time. So it might've just been that group of people just didn't like me or they just thought I wasn't senior prefectable. Um, uh, I also went to Germany. So again, at university, we had a smart cities project. So again, this is actually on my other uh, channel, my vlogging channel. And basically they had, we had a very short opportunity where we had to just make a video comparing smart cities. So Nottingham is a smart city in the UK. Karlsruhe is a smart city in uh, Germany. So we just had to uh, make a quick video about that. So yeah, that was a lovely opportunity. We didn't really get to explore much. I didn't get, really get many photos. I think I actually got a bit moody <laughs> during the trip as well. I'm not sure what happened. I think I got embarrassed or someone embarrassed me or I just did something stupid. Um, so yeah, I kind of didn't really enjoy, I didn't really enjoy the entire of the trip, but I did make a five part vlog. So that's all on my, on my YouTube channel somewhere as well. 
I guess a few other projects I've been involved with, uh, the behind the scenes of a music video. So one of the girls in Nottingham, singer songwriter, and a guy who I met from the photography group, we kind of just all came together and he just said, Brandon, do you want to help be on behind the scenes of a music video or help me film the music video? So I was like, yeah, absolutely, that's fine. So we did that. Um, I also had a little radio show. So I was part of Wizard Radio where I kind of had a show weekly. I think it was Friday at two o'clock. So I would pre-film, pre-record, add sounds in myself because I could obviously edit myself um, and kind of get that out every week. And I think the actual only reason I stopped that, unfortunately, literally straight away, was because I had my dissertation to do at the same time. And I literally, if you imagine it, within a week, I'm having to do hundreds and hundreds of essays and things like that, and also get a one hour show together, including music and, you know, thinking of a topic and thinking of what's trending, what's relevant. It was a lot, and it probably doesn't sound like a lot, dissertation and a bit of radio stuff, but at the time, I was having like people asking me to go to different events and I was having to say no. I was having lecturers coming back to me saying, you need to change this, you need to edit this, you need to film this, you need to do that, and the dissertation. And then I also had this guy on top of me. So yeah, I mean, the way I left that wasn't great. I literally had to just say to him straight away, I can't do any more shows. I'm gonna have to cut it here. I don't think he was very happy with me because he obviously needed a bit of notice to refill my slot with somebody else. But um, yeah, sometimes you just have to say enough is enough. I just physically cannot. Um, do that anymore so like I said I had a few months experience and I've still got proof that I've done it it's just that it ended and I've had to move on to, to different opportunities so I'm hoping in the future that that little bit of experience will pay off for me I was also shortlisted for a competition called who you know so again I haven't really heard much from this company as of now but it was basically a um, like a creative competition so his website allows you to network and create content with other people without all the silly prices and premium subscriptions and things like that and i think the website is still active i think he's just kind of working on it because i haven't had any updates on it but yeah i got um shortlisted for the creative um the creative uh section for that i didn't win obviously but my documentary did get into the top 30 or top 40 or whatever it was so that was nice to see that you know i think it was a documentary i think it was photos i can't remember what it was i think it was photos actually um, I was also in kind of like a Big Brother American style type show. It was called Caesar's World, um, Caesar's Reality World. So it basically was like Big Brother and, you know, you kind of had little teams, you had little competitions to do. And obviously because we were on American timing, I was up till like four or five o'clock in the morning. And for them, it would be like mid-afternoon. So I'd be there on, I don't know, FaceTime or Google Meets or whatever it was with my headphones in. And I'd have Nan every so often coming in going, are you all right, Brandon? It's quite early, do you wanna to go to bed? And I'd be like, no, I'm, I'm in Big Brother, I'm playing a game. And I remember there was two nights I couldn't actually attend the show and I got saved twice. And then in the next part of the show, I was talking to a couple of guys. One of the guys was really good looking and we were not on the same team. And he was like, yeah, Brandon, I've got your bag and this, this, this. And I think that's the thing with these kind of games, you can't trust anyone. So I did say to someone else in my team, I said, I don't trust that guy. So I think I accidentally got someone else to go after him and then for some reason it was me against someone to be evicted and he had the decision of who to save. For some reason he didn't save me, so he basically got me evicted from the show. And yeah, I was just kind of a bit like, oh, all right, well, that wasn't great. I'm not sure why that happened. And then he kind of just said to me, well, it's because he kind of had an alliance with somebody else. And if he was to go against, if he was to go against them and vote me uh, and vote the person out that I was with, he would lose his alliance because that person was kind of sub part of his alliance. So it was a bit like, right, okay, so you picked someone who you've got kind of majority with as opposed to just me who just fancies you. And he was like, yeah, well, I'm really sorry. And then, yeah, he said, oh, I hope you're okay. And this, this, this. And don't get me wrong, again, it was an amazing show. It was really fun to be part of. And I think it is still on YouTube somewhere. Um, again, I don't know if it, I'm not 100% sure if it is on YouTube, or I think it was the final. It was just the final that ended up being on YouTube. But it was still an amazing series to be part of. And, you know, it was, I think with these things, I like to try things once and be like, okay, that was good, that was bad, that was interesting, and then kind of just go from there. So yeah, it was really, I mean, I love Big Brother. I think I've applied for The Real Show twice. I've applied for other TV shows. So I just thought, you know what, kind of a fake Big Brother, but it's kind of like Big Brother. Let me just apply and see what happens. Um, again, I guess an achievement was just my Nottingham Trent graduation and all of the different sketchbooks that I made <laughs> throughout my university experience. Um, and then I also put on here my whole bulk buying and bulk selling uh, situation as well, which is basically through like Vinted and, and eBay and things like that. So yeah, I think that 
is probably enough um, achievements uh, for this video. I mean, I've done a load of other things as well. Gold Troop Edinburgh's Award. I had like a camera on like a tripod thing and I was like running around a stage filming different dance moves, filming cooking videos, being in music videos as little, like an extra. So, you know, there's loads of extra things that I've done, but I just thought, you know what? What are some of the best achievements that I have and what are the best stories that I can talk about? I guess that is kind of what this video was for. And actually, although I didn't speak about anything or everything in too much detail, I kind of gave you a glimpse as to, you know, some of the projects that I've been involved with and some of the things that I'm very, very proud of that I've done because, you know, just reflecting back on my younger years, like a lot of it just went very, very quickly and I didn't have those contacts that I needed. I didn't have those friends that I that I needed. I didn't know anyone in the creative industry. I kind of just relied on YouTube and, you know, watching TV, picking up a name, trying to message them on social media, like, hey, get me into the industry kind of thing. And then once I started doing one, two, three different projects, I just kind of attracted good people towards me. So yeah, I think that's the thing with life. You're gonna constantly have people coming in of your life, going out of your life. Um, but I think those ones that stick with you because I've got a lot of decent people that are here and that we are like this, family, some friends, um, I've got a couple of boys that are always going to stick by my side as my mates. But um, yeah, I think once you've found those people, anything is possible. So yeah, I just thought I'd do a quick video just summarising some of those things. Obviously, I've shared a lot of these things on LinkedIn. Obviously, I've shared a lot of these things on other videos and vlogs and things like that. But, you know, all when I was younger when I kind of didn't realise how important and how great these things were. And I also have been told by lots of people, you know, you've achieved X, Y, and Z, just move on to the next project. And now I completely understand it that yes, I have done good things, but I need to close those chapters. I need to close those books uh, and experiences and then just continue doing more great things going forward. So yeah, I'll never be as busy in the future as I was when I was at university, having like six part-time jobs, doing, you know, five different projects a week and uni and radio stuff and, you know, trying to go out and do work at the same time. But I think going forward, I will still get involved with things. I'll just do it on a bit of a, a less hectic scale. So yeah, that's kind of it. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of everything for me. I do obviously have some life updates that are going on at the moment. Obviously I'm still single. Obviously I am moving into a new industry and obviously I am still creating content, but um, yeah, I'm not gonna delve too much into those kind of things. I'm gonna kind of keep some of my private life private. Um, and then obviously for those people that have me on LinkedIn, you can see that because I don't, I don't let anyone, I don't let everyone get into my LinkedIn. So yeah, well, that's everything from me. Uh, so if you did enjoy the video, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Until my next video, thank you very much and goodbye.